The first short course in highway engineering was in January of 1914 at the Engineering Building on the University of Illinois campus. The state legislature had passed the Tice Bill in 1913 to improve roads and bring Illinois out of the mud. The short course provided training for the newly appointed county superintendents of highways. At that time, there was not really a state highway system. It was in the late teens and the early to mid-twenties that the state highway system was constructed in Illinois. Before the Tice Bill, the vast majority of roads, if not all the roads, were maintained and constructed by townships. And the state saw a need for uniformity and improvement to the roads across the state of Illinois, as they say, to get us out of the mud. There was a $60 million bond issue in the late teens, and then in the 20s there was a $100 million bond issue. An interesting statistic, there was one year when there were 1,230 miles of new pavement constructed in the state of Illinois as part of that effort. So the Tice Bill created a new uh, State Highway Commission. It created the State Aid Highway System. It created the uh, County Superintendent of Highways position. And all of these things fit together to create uniform construction and uh, maintenance of today's roads. Back in the day, they would have good road days. And um, the whole community came together and said, we're gonna improve this quarter mile of road. And improvement meant putting 18 inches of gravel, nine foot wide, on this road for a quarter mile. The farmers would supply the horse, the teams and the wagons, and the town folk would be the shufflers. People donated their cars or hauled the townsfolk out to the country to improve this road. And in that one day, they shoveled and hauled over 500 loads of gravel to improve that, that quarter mile section of road. So, you know, we take all this stuff, all these assets that we have available to us today for granted. They weren't, they weren't available back then. The first director of the conference, the road school as they called it, was Carol C. Wiley. We called him C squared for short and I was fortunate to have known C squared. It was like a two week uh, set of classes on how you build and, and maintain roads. Before that, improving roads was maybe grading the roads or fixing a mud hole. It's interesting that one of C squared's publication, Engineering Experiment Station Circular 18, was appropriately entitled The Construction, Rehabilitation, and Maintenance of Gravel Roads Suitable for Moderate Traffic. I can relate to that. I lived on a farm in western Illinois in Scarlet County, and we had a mud road in front of our house. And it wasn't until after World War II, 1946, that we got a gravel road. By the late 1920s, miles of new highways had been constructed across the state, and the number of vehicles on those highways had greatly increased. With more miles of highways, the conference topics now included maintenance, safety, and further improvements. One of the things that they had to start dealing with was now that we have built this highway system, how do we maintain it? The counties would hire patrolmen, and the patrolman would be assigned so many miles of road. And he would be required to wear a badge. And um, at each end of the road, there was a sign place with his name and information so that he would, people would know who to contact to maintain these, these sections of road. When we started pulling the Illinois out of the mud at the early part of the century, there were very few vehicles. There were maybe 200 vehicles in Ogle County at that time. Um, but into the 30s and 40s, you know, you had you know, Henry Ford and the Model T and vehicles were becoming affordable. You know, there were more people on the road. You know, vehicles were becoming more of a tool, more of a necessity. In 1935, the conference name was changed to the University of Illinois Conference on Highway Engineering. 
In the following years, conference themes were adequate highways, safe highways, and modern highways. By 1942, the nation was at war. Highway construction topics were still foremost at the conference, but for the next few years, conference activities also included wartime problems and challenges. In those years, the theme was Victory Highways. The second director of the conference was a gentleman named Ellis Nanner. Ellis Nanner was a native of Astoria, Illinois. He was a graduate of the University of Illinois, a very bright guy. After World War II, Ellis came to the university and replaced C.C. Wiley and uh, was working on the staff there. And uh, he had spent some earlier time with the Illinois Division of Highway in District 4 over in Peoria as a soils engineer. So he had a good perspective on what was going on in highway engineering in the state of Illinois at that time. In 1956, Marshall Thompson came to the University of Illinois as an engineering student. I attended on an Associated General Contractors of Illinois Highway Engineering Scholarship. Ellis Nanner at that time directed that program and as part of our uh, routine we always showed up for the THE conference and Ellis would introduce all the scholarship winners. So I was fortunate to have uh, started at a very early time. Highway engineers came to the conference to learn new techniques and understand the current research. But the conference attendees were also expected to network with their peers. There was always a, a, a social aspect of the conference. In the early days they had banquets. Uh, later years we always had a fish fry, which was very popular with everybody. A lot of you state engineers showed up for the first day because that's the day the fish fry was held. You know, the annual fish fry, uh, I had never seen anything like that before uh, until I showed up at a THE conference where there would just be hundreds of people all sharing stories. In 1973, the conference name became what it is today, the Transportation and Highway Engineering Conference. Marshall Thompson took over the role of conference director in 1974 and continued the tradition of practical instruction combined with broader transportation themes. The goals of the conference were broad. We had specialty meetings for state highway agency folk and various groups of specialties for highway, pavement construction, design, maintenance, etc. They've always been focused on trying to help the transportation engineers in this state and others to bring them up to date on the latest technology, discuss current issues and problems, etc. I was the director of the conference from 1974 until 2002. At that time, Bill Butler, the current director, became the fourth individual to hold that spot. Yeah, I remember when uh, Marshall first approached me about being director of the THE conference. He said, Bill, one thing I have to tell you, though, is that there's only been three directors of the THE conference over the past 91 years, so no pressure. I think Bill's done an admirable job. I want to congratulate him for maintaining the conference quality. So congratulations, Bill. You've done a great job. The THE conference remains true to its beginnings today, providing sessions on topics relevant to local roads, state and federal issues, and current research in transportation. In the past 10 years, when I think about, again, materials research, uh, we've moved on and uh, performance is still obviously very important and tests continue to get more sophisticated, um, but now the environmental movement and environmental sustainability has become a really important subject and, uh, and so now we've seen a movement in the area of uh, higher levels of recycled materials, uh, low energy approaches such as warm mix asphalt, and uh, the use of even roofing shingles in asphalt materials and, um, and we see similar um, things happening over on the concrete uh, field as well. Uh, we've even seen presentations that have talked about how climate change has changed the way that uh, we respond to disasters and how we uh, uh, will think about planning resilient transportation infrastructure systems in the years to come. So thanks for joining us as we celebrate the 100th year of the Transportation and Highway Engineering Conference 
and we hope you enjoy the rest of the week as we look back and look forward to the history of transportation in Illinois.